on track on the force more and more is 94 and the Knicks are hardcore and I'll tell you like this we ain't never look sharp oh shit shit oh here we go here we go alright we're here on this back hold on hold on alright here we go salute to Knicks Nation on this Friday evening another edition a KFTV post game live presented by Underdog Fantasy. Go to underdogfantasy.com and use our code KFTV for first time deposit match of up to $100. CP the franchise, Al Shataros on the ones and twos. Al, we're hitting the music tonight. Because on a night where we said, Welcome back, Captain Clutch Jalen Brunson, this next team knew that they were on a mission tonight. They had a big game against the Orlando Magic, a team that had beaten the Knicks three games in a row looking for the sweep. But as Preston Achua would say in his post-game press conference, they knew what the task was at hand. They needed the victory, and they went in and handled business wire to wire, setting the tone from downtown, setting the tone defensively. And once again, welcome back, Captain Clutch, with an efficient night and even get some rest at the end of the night. So a win, a win, a win all the way across the board, man. Knicks win, 98 to 74. Let's talk about it, man. Call us up, 657-383-1509, or you can hit us up on the Knicks Fan TV Discord. CP the Franchise, Alex Rattaros on the ones and twos. So to everybody in the chat, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Business, business, business. That's the type of night. That's the type of time we were on tonight, Al. Mm. This was business. We had two nights off. Fan base didn't know what to do. You know when we get like more than one day off, we're scrambling. You know what I mean? We, 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 <laughs> we're getting that itch. You, you know what I mean? We, 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 like dope fiends. We, we need that Knicks basketball. But we knew that we, we knew coming into this that we had to get a W against this, this Orlando Magic team. MSG was ferocious. The crowd knew what it was. We got Brunson like – the, the setting was set. Every, the, everything was set. The scene was set. And I, I just love what I saw from this team, man. End to end, top to bottom. I mean, they set a ferocious tone in this game, both from downtown and defensively. I thought this Knicks front court was dominant. Presses a chua, dominant. Josh Hart, angry, dominant game. Dominant game. And then from downtown, man, just lighting it up 43%, 48% from downtown was this Nick team. I mean, Brunson four for seven, Hart three for five. It wasn't even Ragu's night tonight, but she had three for three for McBride, including a four-point play. Uh, Bogdanovich adds a three. Precious two for four from downtown. And then, as I said, conversely, you know, Paolo, Paolo is Paolo, but this Nick front court was dominant, man. What a statement victory and a big, big win. Move back into fourth place and hold this Magic team to 74 points. The lowest scoring game score against an opponent this season in the NBA. So great job by the Knicks, man. CP, this Magic team averages about 50 points in the paint. Tonight, the New York Knicks, while not being fully healthy, held them to 26. This was a dominant performance by the front court. Yeah. Got to give a shout out to Isaiah Hartenstein and Precious Heart, for Heart, the work yeah, that they yeah. did tonight, man. It was a block party out there without yeah. Mitchell Robinson. Look at these guys. Block party. Between the... Between the Isaiah Hardenstein block on Paolo meeting him at the rim, and then you have Precious just filling in elsewhere, it was a great night, man, for the New York Knicks. I mean, yeah. this is what you want to see from a team that lost its star in Jalen Brunson, gets him back. They look galvanized. They're ready to attack, handle business. Look, it's a tight Eastern Conference race. These guys know what's on the line. Yeah. Thankfully, Miami lost last night. You know what I mean? You and, got and the pace playing, also playing OKC last right night, now. too. Miami's playing but OKC you, right now as well. But still, you had those guys losing last night, them and the Pacers, so you get a little wiggle room. Yeah. Knicks get a little help uh, from others last night, and Knicks took care of business tonight, man, to create more separation. That's what you like to see. I think the big thing for me tonight watching this game is that it's Josh Hart, man. Even yeah. after he injures himself, he's still out there. And how about the put-back dunk on the Brunson three that was missed? And yeah. just the Ferocious. emphatic Ferocious. slam and just and – just, Ferocious. Get in the crowd activated, man. This yeah. is this is the type yeah. of stuff you want to see. And then you get the good news that OG and an OB 
is going through contact right now. He's back on the court. Oh, you have Julius back? Randall, it seems like he's in it. the wing. You have Mitchell Robinson running up and down the court. All right? Yeah. Things are, you know, after a game like this, again, some optimistic news, man, as a Knicks fan, things are starting to look bright. No, no question about it. No question about it, man. And, you know, what the difference a game makes, and it's, it's truly a make-or-miss league. You're coming off the Hawks' loss where, uh, you know, you shoot – 38% from the field and 30% from three, flip it around tonight, and they couldn't miss. They could not miss. And, you know, just just a, just a statement victory. You talked about Hart. There's so many guys that you got to talk about tonight. But, you know, in, in the vein of Josh Hart, just, just the edge that he's been playing with, being able to lead this team. You still, like, when the game started in that first quarter, when they got those blocks and they're getting it out and they're getting in transition, that's the Hart game. That's the hard game. So seeing him mm-hmm. being able to score, being able to play make in transition, I don't know if it was Joe Ingles or somebody on the Magic bench that got him tight, but it, it seemed like from the second quarter on, he was trying to kill everybody. And that's the type of Josh Hart that you need, man. You need that Josh Hart that's playing with a mean streak, but just just leading, you know, just leading. And, and he's been vital for this Knicks team when Julius went down and then when Jalen went down to do everything. To do everything, guard the tough assignments, get the team out in transition, rebound, best rebounding guard in the league, knocking down his shots, which is very important, and it's going to be very important in the playoffs for him to do that. He's on, he's on a very, very hot streak right now, man. Josh Hart is looking great, bro. Absolutely. You just love to see it, man. 42 minutes for him tonight, 8-12 eight eight from the field, 3-5 of five from downtown, yeah. 7 boards, 4 assists. 19 points in total. This guy was just in his bag tonight. You love to see it, CP, yeah. especially from a role player, man. And this is where I go back to guys getting those opportunities where guys are injured and you start to see him thrive. It's only going to help him when it comes time to the playoffs. And look, we got to talk about Isaiah Hartenstein, who's been dealing with an ankle injury, right? He's Achilles well. injury. He's looking and good he looked tonight. good tonight, man, between I cutting, yeah. blocks, rebounds. Like, I know he only played 20 minutes tonight, but – that it's positive to see the first play that stood out to me. You see Dante kick it to Josh Hart in the left, uh, in the uh, court from was it the left corner three? Hart then drives baseline, finds a cutting Isaiah Hartenstein, finishes through the contact, gets the and one. That is encouraging because in previous games, man, he, he looks a little tentative. He doesn't want to go out there and hurt himself. Yeah. Tonight, he had the confidence to play his game, and now you're starting to see him just feel comfortable again. That's what I like to see. Yeah, with with iHeart, you saw right out the gate just him making the extra effort on on certain plays that he was moving well. It seemed like he, he was just feeling a lot better tonight because it seemed like it, he was himself even though he was on a, on a minutes restriction, you know, meeting Paolo at the rim in the second half. Was it was that second quarter or second half? I believe that was the, that was the I think uh, that was the second quarter, wasn't sec- it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was either second or the third. But either way, great play. Great play. I think it was a third, matter of fact. Um, uh, that was a great play. Yeah, it was a third. Yeah. The guy got in my notes right here. Yeah, it yeah. was a third quarter. Meeting Paolo at the rim. So, like I said, I, I thought it was just a dominant performance by the Knicks front court. Presses Achua was ridiculous tonight. Uh, I mean, absolutely ridiculous tonight. Presses Achua. Um, rightfully so. Gets the, the post-game interview in front of the fans and, and bigged up New York. Obviously a product of the city. So, that was a great moment for him. But, you know, Paolo's going to be Paolo. He's going to have his moments. The great ones do. But I thought Precious's defense was uh, excellent. I thought his defense was excellent tonight. Then he pours in 14 boards, four assists, two steals, and five blocks, two or four from downtown. And what I also liked about him was just the way that he was keeping the offense going. You know, every time he had it, he was looking to make a play. If he had to shoot the three, he had to let it fly. But a lot of the times, he was getting that ball. He was driving it into the paint, getting it to the guards. The guards would find somebody. Knicks might find somebody going back door or find somebody open for the three. They ran a lot of uh, really nice actions through the bigs, and, and Precious Achua was a, was a uh, big part of that tonight for sure. I think the big thing about Precious CP is that 
you know, when we looked for a backup four, he's just excelling at what you want him to do. Not only is he rebounding at a high rate, not only is he able to finish inside the paint, but the thing is that he can t he can attack off the dribble as you like to see him get barrel down the lane, uh, finish through contact. He's not afraid of he's not afraid of getting physical on the paint. But the other thing too is that when he cuts and he drives, he's also looking to pass. Man, he's know how he knows how to kick it out to the perimeter, and that's a big aspect to what Tom Thibodeau likes to run yeah. through his system, right? So for a big that's not it's able to cut, drive, knock it and pass it out to guys at the three-point line, it's a huge 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 uh value to what he's doing for the New York Knicks man and look, this is another guy like if you're worried about Julius Randle and how he's going to play, not saying he's going to replace Randle or anything of that nature, but you can have confidence in a guy as your back and forth. You need to give Randall a little bit of a break, man, because he's doing because he's coming back from a shoulder injury. You can at least be confident that pressure is going to give you some solid minutes, especially defensively, and fill in where he can offensively as well. Yeah, a absolutely, man. So to everybody in the chat once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Big Knicks win tonight. Let me know how you guys are feeling in the chat. I see a lot of my franchise channel members in the chat. Throw some emojis in the chat. Let us know how you're feeling tonight. It's Friday night. Knicks get a big win, 74 points. They hold this Magic team. I mean, listen, this Magic team is not, you know, gangbusters by any stretch. But still, that is a dominant defensive effort by the Knicks. I thought they were excellent in terms of their paint protection and rim protection. And it, it just showed tonight their, their effort. They led by their effort, and they dominated this game. They, they dominated this game wire to wire. And they were able to withstand a couple of, of tough moments. You know, they, they jump out the gates early, five blocks in the fourth, in, in the first Brunson with 10 points. Second quarter, first half of the second quarter, you know, Paolo and the Magic start turning up. It, was, it became more of a defensive battle in, like, that first half of the second quarter. And then they finished mm -hmm. the second quarter strong. Finished the second quarter very strong. Pressure's a big part of that. Josh Hart, a big part of that. McBride, a big part of that as well. And then third quarter, it was kind of the same, where both teams didn't really have it going in the first part of the third. Defensive effort. And then the Knicks, the Knicks are able to, uh, to to once again pull away. You know, 25 to 15, they won that, that third quarter. So the Magic putting up 16 points in the second quarter, 15 points in the third. Uh, Knicks, conversely, was 24 and 25. And then, uh, you know, fourth quarter is 2018 Magic. But uh, just, just a, a great, great victory for the Knicks. Shout out to the Rhyme Animal, Chuck D. Out $10 Super Chat says, had to get this. This one here is for Precious. He was omnipresent. Workers, yo, a buckets and D night. Joe Ingles was in my fourth grade class in 1971. <laughs> <laughs> do you think? Shout out to the rhyme animal, Chuck D. Do you think Joe Ingles and Boyan Bogdanovich is like the Spider Man meme? I and think so. I, I think so. Yeah. It's like the same guy out there, man. Yeah. It's uh, when they were both out there in the second quarter. I was like, this is truly <laughs> a Spider Man <laughs> meme <laughs> moment as they're. As they're guarding each other up, I was like, "There's this is what who's, I guess this is what the people were waiting for, right? This is what we all wanted to see." Hair. Who's losing? So, but yo, did you hair, see? <laughs> Ingles. Did you see that as soon as Ingles checked in, he had some words for Josh Hart because yeah. of the Late yeah. Show podcast. He's yeah. like, yeah. "Wait a minute, you said I'm not, I'm not athletic. All this stuff. He, yeah. he saw that he had something to say. <laughs> I, I like that. And and then Josh Hart just just went crazy on him afterwards. So uh, you wouldn't like it when he's angry, man. He turns into the Incredible Hulk. It, it just went beast mode." So, yeah, between Ingles and Boy um, Bogdanovich, they're, they're fighting and see who's got the better bird's nest uh, on, on top of their head. So, yeah, look at it. Look at extremely washed, man. But but either way, as we look through this game, Captain Clutch, welcome back, man. 26 points, 11 for 19 shooting from the field, 4-7 from downtown. So much for Russ, so much for a bruised knee. Looked great, man. He was another one that was playing kind of angry. You know, Anthony Black got insulted him a little bit. You know, try to give him a little flat I, tire. I think there's some fans outside waiting for Anthony Black to go jump him. Yeah, yeah. We try to give him a little flat tire. JB didn't like that. And then, you know, he just got into his bag. <laughs> he just got into his bag and just started lighting him up. So, welcome back to for uh, Captain Clutch. Got some much-needed rest in the fourth. And there you go, man. We look forward to Philly, man. But he looked great tonight. Definitely looked great. He was hitting the deck a little too much for, for my liking. He was hitting the floor a lot, especially in the first three. Taking months. charges after coming back from an injury. I'm like, yeah. wow, this guy. He he was back to back to where where he left off, hitting the deck on every play. But hey, made it out of there unscathed relatively. 
and, and you live to fight another day. But he looked great tonight, man. 26 points, 11 to 19 from the field. In 29 minutes, CP. Fish 11 to 19 in 29 Dude, minutes, 4 7 to downtown. Yeah. Brunson just, it's, as soon as the first quarter started, it was, you had a feeling that he was about to go off this game. And it, it's nice to also see that the Knicks dominated and Brunson, as you mentioned, got some rest because coming off that knee injury uh, against the Cleveland Cavaliers, you don't want him to extend himself too much. Thankfully, you got much needed help out of, you know, Deuce McBride, Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo. Those guys are the guys who really stood up. Dante and Hart playing 42 minutes. McBride spelling uh, Brunson for his minutes as well. Yeah. Those are the guys that you, Tom Thibodeau relied on tonight. And But just going back to Brunson, like, this is... It's like he just came back from vacation and nothing happened. Like, yeah. truly nothing happened, yeah. which is just insane to even think about. Uh, you saw that he was, like, holding his knee at times uh, throughout this was game. Was it his hand or his knee? I couldn't tell. It looked like he was just grabbing his knee, man. Like mm. it looked like he was grabbing his knee from like just from all the contact that he was taking this game. I mean, you mentioned what Anthony Black was doing. He was taking charges. Um, I think it's just not necessarily saying that he re-aggravated it, but the way that he plays, it's such a physical style of basketball that yeah, that's just kind of who he is, man. He, it's gonna his body just takes a toll after just. You know, taking contact, initiating contact, yeah. it just starts to add on, man. But yeah. thankfully, he didn't have to play too much tonight. And and hey, right on cue, Morpheus twenty nine sixty nine in the chat. Brunson zero free throws. SMH. So he wasn't impressed. He 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 wasn't impressed. I, you know. <laughs> I mean, zero. Are free, you not that's entertained? That's kind of crazy, though. I mean, yeah, I guess, but I mean, come on, man. On a night like tonight, he just got back. He had it I going think, from the outside. Why, why Why? do more damage? You know? I mean, he was attacking the inside, too. Yeah. But that, honestly, that's a little crazy. To me, it's not the fact that it's not, it's no shade to Brunson. To me, it's crazy for the refs that they're not even calling him. Yeah. Like, giving him foul calls because he's he's getting hit tonight, man. He was, Yeah, he was. He, he definitely was. Uh, shout out to Bill's Paid Al. Join the franchise channel members. Salute to Bill's Paid. Absolutely. Fight out super chat from David Fonseca. Al said, CP, let's stop beating around the bush here. Pause. When will you be on the roommates podcast? Mm. I don't know, man. You know, tell them hit me up. You know, I'm around. They know how to find me. You know, it's a little salute to those guys. Salute to those guys. Man. Only sharing the podcast with the IG feed. What's that? You're on, on KFTV sharing the podcast with the IG. Yeah, team. yeah. And shout out by Captured by Mike, man. Great photographer, uh, NBA photographer. Uh, big fan of KFTV, man. So that that's my guy. Shout out to Mike. So, yeah, he uh, he sends us the, the collab post on Instagram. Hit, hit us up on Instagram, too, everybody in the chat, man. Instagram.com uh, slash KnicksFanTV. We got good, great content there. So, yeah, shout out to them. But, yeah, call us up, man. This is People's Show, 657-383-1509. Let us know your thoughts on tonight's game. Let us know how you're feeling about this team going forward. 19 games left. Every game counts. Every game is critical for this team as they as they engage in this dogfight in the East. You got Philadelphia coming through now for the next two. What's the score of that Miami uh, Thunder game out? Uh, that right. game ended, CP. How is it? How are we looking? So, uh, OKC won 107 to 100. Shea and company taking care of business, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Our oh, guy, Shea Gilgis Alexander and OKC Thunder taking care of business. So uh, let's, let's take a look at the standings here a little bit. Knicks move up two games on Miami right now. And also move up in fourth. Move up to fourth. Half game up on the Magic. Two games mm. up on Miami. And mm. two games up on the Sixers. Two and a half up on the Pacers. And we get that mini series between the Sixers on Sunday and Tuesday. They need to win every game this week. Yeah, man. They need to win every game before they go out west. And make sure to tune into Game of the Week tomorrow. Yeah. Previewing the yeah, Sixers yeah, game. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or the Sixers series, I should say. Because a lot at stake is on the line. Tala Sadiki in the chat. Hold hold that question. We're gonna get to that. We're definitely gonna get to that conversation um as part of the show. We we want to get to the callers first. Before we um, take a look forward, let me let me load up Dan from New Jersey on the Discord. Dan, are you with us? Are you with us, Dan? Dan, Dan, going once. There we go. Hello, guys. 
Hey, wah, wah, wah. There we go. Happy Friday, my guy. How you feeling? Yo, yo, guys, guys. Happy yeah. Friday. Happy Friday. You know, you we doing? just listen, man. The Knicks walked into Madison Square Garden today and they said, give us our damn four seed back. Yeah. Statement. I statement. love it. Statement. I love it, man. Yeah. It was a statement win tonight. The best defensive effort we've seen since 2012. Since 2012. Uh, and the lowest yep. the lowest score in the league this year. Exactly, man. That was back that was back when Melo was winning the scoring title with 28 points a game. Back, <laughs> so back to the Knicks tape days. Look at that. Yep. So I'm you know, I'm really proud of the effort that this team has been putting in. It looks like um it looks like the dawn is finally coming. It looks like OG is going to be ready any day now. Yeah. Maybe next game, maybe the one after that. It looks like Randall's going to progress to the point that he should be able to get back like by the time the playoffs come. Yeah. We'll see how he performs, but listen, man, I have confidence. And, hey, if we could get a, the luxury of having a Mitch Iheart and, you know, sometimes a Chua front court, man, yeah. where they're all getting minutes in the playoffs and they're fresh because they're splitting the minutes – Oh my God! I mean, I mean ima- imagine, imagine a lineup. Imagine a lineup you could put out there of Brunson, Dante, OG, Precious, and Mitch. Imagine that. The, the that spacing, lineup. the spacing would be immaculate. The spacing would be immaculate. The and defense, speaking of Dante, man, crazy. shout out Dante, man. 200 threes, man. 200 threes for the big ragu, man. Great job, man. Fourth. Fourth all time. Is his first year with the Knicks, man. Yeah, man. Dante. Listen, Beautiful. man. Dante might be one of the one of the best contracts Leon Rose has has yeah. been had been able to Leon negotiate. Rose and that's hit, saying a lot. He hit back to back jacks, as they would say in baseball. Right out back to back yeah. jacks, man. The Brunson contract last year, the Devin contract, Devincenzo contract this year. Leon Rose, I mean, l- listen, he, he's not going to get executive of the year because you know the, it's political in that way. But if we're talking about moves of the year, Leon Rose has hit it back to back. Bulls. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, man. you know, shout out to our guys. Love you guys, man. Yes, Love sir. the show. Yo, how's your boy, man? How's your boy? What's up with med school, man? When when are you making the transition? Oh, I'm gonna be in there. I'm I'm gonna join the Knicks fan Philly Alliance okay. in July. Okay. So so we starting up the Philly wing. Um for, for Yeah, the yeah, I gotta okay. get I gotta get together with Goat Simp. But oh, you and Angel gonna start up the wave. Okay, all right. Mm. All right, sounds good, man. Sounds good. We'll we'll, we'll catch up and uh let us know the progress, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dan from New Jersey, man. Shout out to Dan, bro. Shout out to Shout Dan. Shout out to Dan. Huh? Yeah. You know the thing about Dante, though, and he, I think he's going to – he's very well on pace to pass Evan Fournier for most threes in the season. Yeah. The thing about that is that when I think about Evan Fournier on this team is that though that year he was, like, so up and down from three. It was like you either go 10 to 13 or you go, like, 1 to 13. It was never yeah. really consistent – Dante's been very consistent when it comes to shooting the three ball, man. You know, yeah. at least he's going to make three. And look, even tonight, he took 10 attempts. He he went 30% from downtown. But there are times where he takes 10 attempts and he makes five, and that's a great night. Yeah. So for Dante, dude has been very consistent for three-point shooting, has helped space this floor. And you just see that even in a game like tonight against the Orlando Magic, and it's always against the Orlando Magic. He he struggled. He hasn't had more than 15 points against this team this season. He spaces the floor so well that they have to make sure somebody's out there to guard him. Yeah, he, he yeah. can't play his game, man. That's how impactful he is for this team. And that's just the game plan Orlando has for him. They don't they don't want him to start being a flamethrower from downtown because the thing about this Orlando Magic team, they're terrible at shooting the three. So. In return, they have to make sure that they're guarding the three-point line very well and force teams to attack in the paint. That's not Dante's strength, so that's the only way the Magic are going to be able to, you know, stay in games. And it's interesting because talking to people, they they want the Magic, man. They want the Magic in the playoffs. They want to see a Knicks Magic matchup, yeah. man. And I yeah. think you can feel confident, especially when you see a performance like not tonight, where you get 
the Knicks shooting essentially 49% from downtown that if you have the Knicks shooting at that level, the Magic are just not going to be able to keep up, man. Sure, they're a physical team, but as you saw tonight, not even fully healthy, a team that averages 52 points in the paint, Knicks hold them to just 20. Or they dominated goals. in the points in the paint, man. Yeah, man. Dominated points in the paint. I would take our 26 experience. points in the paint. For a team yeah. that averages 52 points in the paint, they held them to 26. Ha- held them to half. Yeah. Half the season average. Excellent night, man. Excellent night. I'll tell you that. that and the Knicks court. are not healthy, CP. Yeah. Well, no, but defensively, they're better. You know what I mean? Sans, Sans Mitch. You know what? No, scratch that. They're playing well. They're playing well. You know, I mean, obviously, you still need OG. Mitch would make them more ferocious. You know, Precious is a better defender to me than Julius. You know what I mean? But right now, as a unit, they're playing well. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're, they're, mm-hmm. they're playing well, very well. And then as far as Dante, um, you know, we always wondered, at least I did, would he carry over the three-point shooting from Golden State? With Golden State, he was averaging five attempts. Now, most of this, most of this was, uh, was as a bench Right, but as a bench member, 40% from three on 5.3 attempts. With the Knicks, eight attempts, and he's at 40. He's at 30. He was basically at 39.7 last year. He's at 40.6 mm-hmm. on eight attempts. Eight attempts, bro. I was never worried about Dante's three point shooting. I was worried about the other part of the game, like attacking and transition and being that facilitator yeah. because the Warriors just gave him that. that f- that we way to do so, but he's being able to do that for the Knicks, man. Yeah. That's yeah. And, and especially with all these injuries, he's still been able to play that type of game. And that's been very important, especially when you don't have Randall, you need another guy to us to create and just to hold the opponent to play some honorable defense. Dante's been yeah. doing that. No question. No question, man. So to everybody in the chat Friday night, Knicks doing it just to get there. Let's go to the phones out. Area code nine one seven. What's your name? Where are you calling in from? Hello. 917, 917. Hello. Yo, what's up, man? Sorry, it's Bill's Paid. It's who? Bill's Paid. Bill's Paid. How you doing, man? What's going on? What's up, man? My fault, my fault. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for what you guys do every every night after the game. No man. problem. Amazing show. And um, I just wanted to tap in and just touch base on some of the things you, you said. Um, yeah. We were moving amazing out there, just seeing the off ball movement. Ball movement looked, was great tonight. Real good. Ball movement was great tonight. And, man. Hey, and I just, I just wanted to come on the show and jump out the window and say, uh, man, put some money on the Knicks, man. We can't mm. be stopped. Mm. Let's go. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to do that for my first show. I wanted to jump out the window. Hey, and say, uh, Eastern Conference, maybe finals. I mean, this is our. It's Friday our night, man. Friends. Tell, tell them how you really feel, this. man. It's Friday night. So. Yep, man. So thanks for having me, man. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, man. Call back anytime. Bill's paid in the chat. Write that call in the chat, man. His first time calling. He's jumping out the window. He's a franchise channel member. He's getting involved, Al. I like it. I like He's it. He's jumping out the window. He's he looks CP. Out of there. The the Knicks look good tonight. And they're not fully healthy. Yeah. And they're yeah. attacking a team that they're battling with in, in playoff yeah. standings. Yeah. I support it. I support it. Jump out the window, people. They stepped up. Who is jumping out the window? Throw a window emoji. Uh, If if you're out out the window right now and and you're feeling like, you know what, once we get healthy, it's it's to the moon right now for this team, throw a window emoji in the chat. Let us know how you're feeling tonight, man. The shell says he's skydiving. Oh, he's out out of there. No parachute. Shout out to our guy, Shells, man. Shout out to our guy, Shells. All right, let's uh, let's hear from Tibbs. This is some Tibbs post-game press conference uh, sound bites. Let's hear from Tibbs, see what he had to say about uh, tonight's victory. I think this is uh, Chris Percy, Percy Inans, mm. uh question here. Chris, Chris has been doing a damn thing with, on the Knicks. Shout beat, out to man. Chris, man. Chris Shout has been putting that work. He's, he's in the mix. Chris is definitely in the mix. All right. Here's Tibbs on, on tonight's victory. Here he is. We're giving up 74 points in today's NBA. It's quite a number. Um, does that stand out to you? You, you know, like, and the thing is, we, we talked about – you know, being shorthanded right now, we have to do it with our defense and our rebounding and keep the turnovers down. And so when we fly around and work together like that and we have the type of activity that we did, it gives us a chance to win. And we have to play hard on every possession. And I love the way we played offensively. I thought we created good shots. 
we got good, we had really good rhythm from three. Uh, and so you know, when we do that, we're, we're going to make. All right, good question there by Tibbs. Uh, good question there by Chris. And, and good answer by Tibbs. And he wanted great defense. They got it. Uh, won the rebounding battle, 43-37. to 37. Turnovers, 16. Magic at 14. Uh, but, but didn't convert. Didn't convert many to points. So, um, you know, that was good. And then 20 dimes. He talked about the ball movement. I, I thought they moved the ball very well. Even, even when a lot of the times a lot of, they didn't convert into shots. Like, there were some choppy periods in the game, like the third quarter, the second quarter, where they had some tough time generating offense. But I still thought their ball movement and their activity, they were very diligent in, in their approach. So I thought they did a good job, even when they weren't getting shots down. For sure. I mean, even through this whole period where the Knicks have been battling all these injuries, the Knicks have been moving in the rock really well, but the conversion rate has not been successful just because you don't have the same shot makers as you do have in like Julius Randle, especially if you miss Jalen Brunson for some time, right? Those are, th and even if you're not having a knockdown shooter like OG Ananobi, those are things yeah. that will lead to assists, right? I mean, part of the assist when you got to pass the ball to someone's got to make the shot when they, when they get it. And, they don't have guys that are necessarily hitting at a high rate, but the one thing that you could say is that they have been moving the rock really well, trying to keep guys engaged and trying to keep the defense honest by trying to shuffle the deck, you know? But, look, the, the thing about the Knicks, man, is that Tibbs constantly preaches ball movement, and it seems like this, this team right here is embodying that because I think they understand that as much as the ball moves around, it helps everybody else out, considering they don't have guys outside of Jalen Brunson who can attack in isolation. They really need to find those open cutting lanes just to make sure that they get the easy shots or even attack out in transition. Yep. Well, well, well said. Well well said, man. So to everybody in the chat once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boy CP and Alex on the ones and twos. Knicks get a big win tonight, 98-74. to 74. Uh, Al, here was Tibbs on the return of Captain Clutch, Jalen Brunson. And once again, this is courtesy of SNY Videos. Here was Tibbs on Brunson's return. Jalen goes from questionable you know, game time decision to doing what he did right from the start. Just does anything surprise you anymore? No, just you know, and, and again, same thing with him. Uh, you know, you, you have nothing but respect for him because he does everything he can to get back as quick as he can. Like he's, you know, two workouts a day. He's on the floor. He's pushing himself in practice. He's there. He goes early. He stays late. Goes through practice. Comes back at night. Gets treatment. Go, works out again, and then you know he gets himself ready <coughs> for what he has to face. Uh, he's, he doesn't take hardly any days off, and that's why he can do the things that he can do. You heard Tibbs out. No days off. That's my kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he loves him so much. He does not take days off. He works and he works and he works and he works. But nah, like in all reality, man, this is this is our point guard. You know what I mean? The work ethic, the leadership. He understands what's at stake. The maturity. Can't take that for granted, man. Everybody can't handle it. Everybody can't do it. I was listening to the roommate show with uh, Ben Stiller on it, and you know, Ben Stiller was asking Brunson about the pressure and so forth. And Brunson really said he doesn't feel the pressure. He yeah. said he's worked, you know, this is, he he and the rest of everybody on the team has that mentality of you put your head down, you grind in, you grind every single day. You put in that work. And that's just something that he's really emphasized, even though over these last two seasons he's been here, that no one really takes it lightly that, when you're part of the Knicks organization that you're not putting in the work. So, you know, when you see your leader, you know, he talks about that, like, and that's one, that's great to hear that the team takes their job so seriously. Right. Yeah. But the fact that your leader is also doing that, that speaks volumes as to, okay, if he's taking it seriously, this is everything that he does on a day-to-day -day basis to be as great as he is. I can't let him down. Right. You can't let the leader down. Yeah. If he's going to be working, even coming back from an injury, because if he's willing to put in that work, to make sure that this team is great and so that they can go to the next level, then what are you doing as a, as the other individual to make sure that 
you're being reciprocal to that process, right? And so I think with Jalen Brunson, you just see that level of leadership where he understands how to like connect with his teammates without having to be a lot, without having to be that guy that just says, you must do this, you must do that. He, his actions speak yeah. louder than his words. Big time, big time. And, you know, it's it's not just him. Like, just, just look at the Nova Trio. Look, look at what they're doing for this team right now. And they, you can see it by the way that they're playing, CP. I mean, Josh playing. Hart, you know, he even as much as he complains and he jokes about it, right? He'll yeah. complain. He just has to get it off his chest and just say how he hates it. He To take that challenge on whatever Tom Thibodeau asks him to do and to excel at it, you have to work. It's not just like you just show up one day and you do it. You have to put in the work to do it. Look at Dante DiVincenzo this season, the way he's shooting yeah. three ball and just how he's taking his offensive game to another level. That is putting in the work to do so. So Big time. Yes, those guys want to be great, but when you see everybody else around there, putting everyone else around the team putting in that effort, how can you not want to be great? True indeed. It's the culture, man. It's the it's culture. So they're setting the tone. Culture. Tips, tips setting the tone, man. Tips setting the tone. Uh, two lifted franchise channel member in the chat says, SMY stepping it up. I can actually hear the questions now. Not really, not really. Shout out to TM. I, he gave me he, the, the he gave me the uh the volume wow. booster for Google Chrome. So that that that's just KFTV technology, man. You know, but we're doing it for the people now. That's what we need to do. Get a little volume. Look at the boost. team. The team is working the after team is working. to figure it out. Look yeah, at that CP. Yeah. For some reason, it doesn't work on the phones. Like, I don't know. It doesn't work on the phones, but for the post-game press conferences, it's good. So now we can get good audio there. And it was so good, that cough. Did you, did you hear that cough from that last yep. press conference? I felt like I was about to get sick. <laughs> that, <laughs> that joint was right in my head. <laughs> I heard that cough in HD. I was like, oh, whoa. <laughs> well, for people who don't know, CP was doing a sound check before we started, and then I said, <laughs> Yo, what up? And I, he was like, whoa, hold on a second. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The opener was crazy. Yeah. We were definitely live. <laughs> oh, man. Good stuff. Good, good stuff, man. Friday night, you know? Absolutely. Salute to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Yeah, I thought I was about to get sick, man. That cough was in HD, man. Mm. It's like, whoa. Uh, so to all, our fan, all of our franchise channel members in the building now, uh, as I said, two lifted salute. Chris Shaw, Will from LI's in the building, man. Shout out to TM. Shout out to JJ as usual. Gamba's in there. Brooklyn, Vegas, salute. What do you want to shout out in the chat, uh, Al? Let's see. See, uh, we got Reek Flair in here as well. Reek. We got Junior Caroma. We got JJ. You said two lifted. You got, we got above the rim in here asking yeah. for where is none other than Mr. Friday Night Knicks himself. He's looking yeah, for where, where is He's he at? Where where yeah. is he at? Shout out to Lawrence Lawrence Peters. Shout out yeah. to you for being a franchise channel member as well. What else we got in here? King Lossky. Shout out to you as well. Yeah, man. Shout Salute. out to TM as well, man. Shout, shout out to, to TM. TM. I, I didn't see Robert uh, at the game. He wasn't sitting next to Mr. Dolan in, in his seats by the bench. You know, as, as he is usually the MSG mold, he wasn't sitting there. Maybe he's working after he hours, working. CP. He might be working. You know, sipping the, the finest of uh, E&J, top shelf, 18 year. <laughs> I was going in on it last night on, on my last on my live stream last night. I said he's probably on the top shelf uh, E&J, you know, the Parmesan <laughs> reserve selection. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the one where you go into 7-Eleven. It's not in the front next to the fireball and the Skittles. <laughs> you got to ask him to go get it in the back. You know what I mean? <laughs> my man said go to 7-Eleven you yeah, to, yeah. like you're asking for like legit bottle service yeah, too, when you yeah. go to 7-Eleven hey man can you go to the back you yeah, know what I need you get me the Parmesan uh... <laughs> by the way get me one of those hot dogs on the rollers yeah, too while, yeah. before I leave it, it's right behind the cheeseburger taquitos right there right yeah <laughs> oh. taquitos uh... oh. <laughs> how many of those you ate in your life man tell the truth man no. How many, how many, saw, of, those, look, how many of those uh, pepperoni look, man. taquitos uh, you get? Look, man, there's been many a nights where it was dark doing my studying and I had to go get the 7-Eleven coffee, but I was never tempted to get like, either yo. the pizza, the taquitos, a hot dog, nothing. Like, Not yo, getting is no this, is, or is this real food? <laughs> what, no. What, what, what is that lab, real food? What laboratory did they make this in? You know? Everything, and the everything. cashier looks depressed as you ask. He's like, you really want this, man? Yeah, you really you want sure. to do this to yourself? <laughs> you sure you just don't want to stick with the honey bun? <laughs> yeah, get the honey bun. It's much safer. 
but safer, man. Uh, let's go to the Discord. Let me get Seku in here. Seku on the Discord. Seku, if you can hear us, go ahead and uh, I'll mute your mic. PCP. How you feeling, bro? Good to hear from you, man. I'm feeling good, my brother, man. Big win tonight, you know. Yeah. Had to get, get Orlando back up out of that fourth spot, you know. Go yeah. back where you belong, man. So get him out of I'm, here. I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself, but I kind of find myself looking at the seeding, you know, and I think the seeding is very important moving forward, especially if we're trying to reach the Eastern Conference Finals, which, yep. you know, if we could probably get to. So I want to know what your thoughts is on that. Right now we're sitting barely in the fourth. Miami look like they creeping up a little bit. Yeah. Indiana in the cut. And now uh, a couple of weeks ago we were sitting nice in the second, but now it looks like <laughs> Cleveland – and <laughs> Milwaukee kind of like got that second and third kind of yeah. locked in real like they 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 put some space in between us. So yeah. I just want to know what you think about the seeding and how how yeah. do you think we can hold on to these spaces with the injuries that we have yeah. moving forward. <clears throat> you know, just let me know what your thoughts are on that is CP. Yeah, I I, I think it's going to be a dog fight to the end, man. Like you know, we're going to be so anxious. I'm going to be checking this by the minute, even when there's no games being played. Facts. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be refreshing this by even when no games being played. Yeah. But, you know, they yeah. only have Cleveland game just up. pulled out. Cleveland just pulled out a big win on um, overtime versus uh, oh, they just beat Minnesota. Tonight, yeah, tonight. overtime. Oh, wow. Big okay. uh, big win. So, you know, Cleveland, oh, they're looking good. So, yeah. um, so I yeah, mean, I don't... it's two out of the possibility. I don't think it's impossible. You know, it's like 19 know, games man. left. <laughs> yeah, weird. 19 games left. I mean, I think they – did they win the last two without Spider, Cleveland? Seemed like they had two good wins. They had yeah, one against yeah, – uh, Yeah, two wins, yeah. yeah. Oh, they lost to the Hawks. Mm -hmm. No, they beat the Celtics and then lost to the Hawks in between. They lost to the Hawks in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But how long is Spider even out for? I'm not even sure. Uh, but the Knicks are four games back at Cleveland. Not, not impossible. But with, yeah. you know, Orlando the half game, Miami two games – Philly, they're two games up. Pacers, two and a Aight. half. Aight. I, I still think four through eight is, is going to be a, a dogfight to the end, man. If you had to pick where you think we land. Yeah. Well, with OG coming back, I, I think we're headed for a four or five matchup. With yeah, them. I think the four is good, man. I like the uh, four or five. I think we're going back to yeah, the four. I, I think it's going to be a New York mm -hmm. South Beach First round Ooh. revenge series. Let's do it. Let's, Let's go. It. Let's, Let's go. go. Thanks for taking my call, CP. Yeah, man. Anytime, man. Good to hear from you, man. Peace, brother. Always. All right, guys. Say cool. What do you think, Al? I, I think we might be heading to South Beach. First round. Four five. We're heading to South Beach. Yeah. Wow. Not for, first. Then. Not first. Oh. They're coming here first. Uh huh. I, yeah, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah, we're yeah. the four seed, they're the yeah. five seed. I get what you're saying. I, I'm not. I'm not lost on that. Yeah. But you, I'm just asking. You want Miami in the first round for revenge? That's who you want. Um, no. <laughs> 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 I want Cleveland. So if we got to drop uh, to six, if we got to drop to six, let's. You know, I, I'm okay with that. It's only a couple games. It's only a couple games. Well, you know, we go on the West Coast trip, might stumble a little bit, and, and maybe we uh, we can line up with Cleveland. I'm going with Cleveland, man. So this is telling me that I'm not going to Cleveland. I'm going with Cleveland. If you get what ah, I'm saying, I see. I see what you're saying. You sure you don't want to go back for the pizza? You I'm don't want good. to go for your waffles. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Positive. I, I thank God I made it out of there with a clean stomach. You know what, what I'm if saying? we made a bet? What if we made a bet between the next draft between you, <laughs> JD, and myself, and that the loser <laughs> has to go to Cleveland for a week <laughs> on a full tour extravaganza? Would you be ready? <laughs> You would have to get proper conditioning for that, man. <laughs> you would oh, really have brother. to get proper conditioning, man. Man. Good Lord. I'm trying to look up this draft thing, man, to see what's going on with Underdog, but it's it's not showing me that we're live right now. I don't it's, know what's happening. Oh, yeah. I'm not I'm not sure. Looks like I, their I system I don't might even, be down. I don't even think the sun came out in Cleveland when we was out there, man. This is, that doesn't surprise me. It's tough. It's tough out there. And we had people we had people saying you they'd rather be in Cleveland than New York, which is a wild statement to me. Yeah, I mean they're just delusional, you know, yeah. delusional. But, but yeah, you know, but if but, you're asking me, yeah. I think this could be a four or five matchup. But I don't think it'll be the Heat. I don't think it'll be a Magic. I think it'll be the Sixers. Mm. I think the Sixers get back to five, and we see them in round one. Okay. I like that matchup. I wouldn't mind that one either. 
it starts with getting these two on Sunday and Tuesday. Very important. Before mm-hmm. they head out west, get these two games against the Sixers, you know, at the very least split, but hopefully get the two. And then when you go out west, can they can they steal two? I, I'm not even sure how they get to. Like, Portland is a must. They have to win that game. They have to win Portland. There's no, have there, to win you Portland. Cannot, you cannot lose in Portland. Can't you lose that game. You need to get that win. You can't lose that game. I mean, the next – I think well, well, the most – Well, who knows? Is, is Steph going to be back for Golden State? Is he going to be – I was going to say Golden tonight? State is probably the next more – the next realistic game to win. Yeah. Um, Because I don't see – like we beat Denver, but we were fully healthy. If we're not fully healthy, we're not beating Denver. Um, we're not beating Denver. And then Sacramento, that's tough because that will be a track race as well. Right. I don't know if the I don't, I don't know if the Knicks are ready for a track meet. I should say at, against Sacramento. And this is yeah. where you would need Julius, man. You know he likes to take that Sabonis matchup. He seriously. likes that Sabonis. He takes it personally. Yeah. He takes it personally, man. So. Something to look at. It, you know, if no Steph, the Golden State game becomes a little bit easier. Not that much easier, but a little bit easier. Um, so maybe it's Portland, Golden State. Maybe it's Sacramento. Maybe maybe they can steal one there. So I, ideally, be. you know, if they come out of there two and two at West Coast trip, I'd be happy with that. That would be successful. That would be successful for me. And then you got winnable games: Brooklyn, Detroit. Got to go through RJ and quick. Got to hit the six real quick. Yo, you saw quick went on went on one last night. I miss quick man. Twenty one points, nineteen assists. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's tough to see, man. It's tough to see, man. But yeah, he 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 went in. He definitely went in. So you know, RJ shooting fifty percent is great. <laughs> JJ, talk to us, JJ. Mm. <laughs> RJ lighting the nets up. It's my guy, Broadway Barrett, man. But, but you know, you got four winnables. Brooklyn, Detroit, Toronto, San Antonio. And then you got a tough one against OKC. That Miami game, next big one. That's the next big big test in the East-wise after Philly. The mm-hmm. Miami game, big one, April 2nd. The, and then, I wonder if you just yeah. rest everybody against that game, honestly. Julius got hurt against Miami. Yeah. Can we just say, you know, yeah. we won you know the what? series already. Don't even we play the series already. Just, Don't just even rest play everybody. Brunson. Don't play anybody, man. Play Toppin and Charlie Brown and them, you know? this. I mean, this was the second time, CP, that the, Julius got hurt playing against Miami. Last season. Yeah. Second time. In March, second April, time. he got hurt against Miami. Now you're going to tell me this year he gets hurt against Miami again? I'm good, man. Second time. Let Charlie Brown... Jacob yeah. Toppin, yeah. all those guys get some run for the yeah. day. I, I don't trust that team whatsoever. I'll even throw Burks in there. Let Burks in there and let him let oh, him light it up. Here we go. I you didn't know? want to mention. I, I didn't want to say Beetlejuice's name, but hey, you said it. I, I'll throw Burks in there, man. To get you know? some to get some minutes to get more bump. than five minutes like he got tonight. Get him get him some bump time, man. Uh, I get him some bump time, man. Five minutes tonight, CP. Yeah. Five minutes. Five minutes. Put him in the trunk. <laughs> Put him in the what? <laughs> Put him in the trunk. Put him in the trunk, mm. man. Bumming it up. Bumming it up, man. Five minutes. But hey, it's only 13 games. Who knows? <sighs> Bumming it up, man. Ah, oh, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Look, CP. The Burks hive has crashed and burned. You, you look, CP. You, you got everybody Whoa. with Hartenstein. Hartenstein. Yeah, came yeah, you. yeah. So maybe if I just reverse course. No, 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 no. no. You me, get one. Yeah, yeah. You get one. Back Burks him up, is like, <laughs> put him in the trunk, and then he becomes a playoff hero. That's what I'm hoping for now. Bury him, and he comes back like the Undertaker. But uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. And I want Burks to do well, but it's just, it, look, man, it is yikes. Nah, him and, him and Bogey been, was bumming it up tonight again. Nah, I don't know, man. Whatever. Shout out to Deuce. Great great, great game by him. Great game by him. Continue to shoot the three ball well and all, and all fairness. And passing well. Continue to make good Dude, reads. Dude, he's starting man. to attack the lane at a different level now. Yeah. Like, he, 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 was, is... he was chopping him up in the mid range. Deuce looks mm-hmm. good. Deuce, Deuce looks great, man. 
No, look, no question about it. And, and this is look, the trade was made, but this is this was my argument for maybe why you don't make a trade is that you give these guys more minutes and maybe that they can develop as the season progresses. And you're looking at Deuce now after getting that promotion to being in the rotation and he's really taken strides, man. It yep. seems like every single week he's just improving his game between the in and out against Evan Mobley, which is how funny is that? Evan Mobley, they said, oh, he Cracked injured against ankles. the Boston Celtics. Cracked yeah, that okay. man's ankles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, McBride destroyed that man's ankles. Now he's missing time. Sent, but sent, anyway, sent him to to the shadow realm. Deleted. But anyway, to the shadow realm. De- for all deleted. you Yu-Gi-Oh fans out there. Uh, but anyway, I don't even know what that is, man. But anyway, yeah, exactly. You don't know, but you're using the reference. I appreciate you though. Appreciate I, I, you. I heard some young whippersnappers use it. And I, I, I probably just stole the lingo. I don't even know where I got it from. <laughs> Good you know. God. Um. But yeah, man, look, Deuce just been improving every single game, man. Yeah. You like to see it. Yeah. You like to see it. He's look, the, between defenses now is shooting. You can see him getting some some solid minutes being in the playoff rotation. For sure. Um I'm I pulled up the strength of schedule just just to wrap up on, on Seku's question, but a very um, you know, it's a hot topic. We just gotta figure out how these guys are gonna get through this thing. You look at strength of schedule, Knicks are ranked sixteenth. And then let next nineteen, Indiana is tenth. Cleveland is seventeenth. So I said Knicks is sixteenth. Cleveland's right there, seventeenth. So basically the same. Orlando twenty first. Miami twenty ninth. Miami twenty ninth, with nineteen to go. You know, take it for what it is. You still got to play the games. Anything can happen. Mm-hmm. Anything is possible. But. Miami, uh, according to this, has a second easiest schedule to finish out the year. Their hardest games are the Nuggets, two more against Cleveland Pelicans, one more against the Knicks, two more against the Sixers, and one against the Mavericks, which will be in Miami because they just lost to Dallas yesterday. Mm-hmm. And then they got some some easy ones left, two more against Detroit, two more against Washington, two more against Toronto. So they got some easy ones also on the schedule. See uh, Gamba saying he got excited for you for a second. CP, yeah. that you thought he thought you knew the Yu Gi Oh reference. No idea. We have uh, we have TM saying Yu Gi Oh watch along with CP soon. Yeah, no no idea, no idea, man. Uh, let's go to India. Al Ashwin in the building. Ashwin, how you feeling, man? Ashwin, hi CP, you? Alex. Uh, how are you, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And uh, first of all, let me say that I really appreciate the amazing work you two are doing. Appreciate it, man. Uh, I will be, I will uh, be rapid fire. I will make a statement, mm-hmm. and uh, I would, uh, I would wish that you would uh, have a small discussion on that how right or wrong it is. Okay. Uh, the statement is instead of uh, bogey and bug, if uh, the way Bruce is playing, the way Hart is playing, the way Precious is playing. I know it may not have been possible because of clutch and uh, the problem with the both com- both sides. Mm-hmm. But if we had Malcolm Brogdon, uh, the way that these three are playing, I could have guaranteed a NBA Finals appearance. Yeah. So that's my statement. Okay. Uh, keep up the amazing work. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. So, so if you couldn't hear, we basically said if we would have gotten Brogdon with the way the rest of the supporting cast is playing, we could go to the finals. Mm. I, mean, I mean, you have to hope that Brogdon stayed healthy. Yeah, yeah, hard to say, you know, hard to say. Would, would it be better here for them than Burks? Yeah, absolutely. They didn't want to pay the price. So, you know, would that have guaranteed them a trip to the final? No, I don't, I don't, I can't say that. The game still it's still have to be It's always hard to say something guarantees, man. I mean, we yeah. told, we only know the path that we took right now, which is that they got Brogdon, 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 so far, Boyan's giving you a little bit more than Burks. Not much more, but yeah, yeah. Who knows? You could have gotten Brogdon. Brogdon could have played some serious minutes and then got hurt. And then you're and then as you're useless. SOL. Equally as useless, man. 
Uh, salute to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boy CP and Alex on the ones and twos. Mustafa, uh, Mohammed Mustafa says we international with it. Yeah, man, if you guys are in the chat, throw your cities, throw your countries in the chat. Let us know where you guys are checking in from. If you guys are watching and, and you see, like, the chat box is great, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button. The chat is for subscribers only. And we want people in here that want to be in here. So subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Tap into the algorithm and get involved, man. Number one show for the fans by the fans is in the building, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what else we want to do here? I want to shout out one of our sponsors of tonight, Al. Ginger Hales, guys. Go out there and get your Ginger Hales and try out their exclusive Ginger Lemonade, man. I'll, I'll rock with Ginger Hales. Heavy. I got the whole supply. Al, did you get yours in the mail? Not yet. It's okay. on the way, though. Should be on the way. Should be on the way. Hopefully by tomorrow. But uh, you have a number of flavors to choose from, man. Between the ginger lemonade, you have the kiwi strawberry, the berry flavor, pineapple. Shout out to Carl Hale and his team, man. Great, great flavors. Great juice. Quality juice. And uh, I, I enjoy it, man. I, I definitely enjoy a lot of those flavors. So uh, check them out. Go to gingerhales.com and use our code KFTV for 15% off on your order, on your first order, 15% off on your first order. So shout out to Ginger Hales, the household name when it comes to ginger lemonade, man. Shout out to our guys at Ginger Hales for sure. Okay. All right, let's get to the phones, man. I am Dresito. Dresito, how you feeling, man? Dresito on the Discord. I'll mute your mic. All right. I don't know if we got Dresito on the, on the mic yet, Al. It's Omar, Omar from the Bronx on the mic. All right. <clears throat> Don't sound like we got Omar. Oh, do we? I see you unmuted his mic. Omar, are you there? Oh, you guys hear me? Yep, we got you. Oh, sorry about that. No problem. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, good night. Big, big win. I think also Philly lost tonight. Miami lost. So definitely we're able to kind of make up some ground in the playoff standings. Mm -hmm. Just quick point, man. As a Chua, he has to find a way into that rotation for the playoffs. Like, yeah. even if it means we stretch it from an eight-man rotation to a nine-man rotation, so be it. Yeah. Precious Achua, like, he's kind of like the Josh Hart version for us at the power forward slot. So I'm definitely, you know, into him being in that playoff rotation. It, just to give Julius a break, give him a little bit of a breather, and create some continuity within the offense in the playoffs. So that's the main thing. He's been on one ever since Julius went down to begin with. So it's not like this is like a flash in a pan. He's been doing this for the past month or so, yeah. and I think he's earned his way into that playoff rotation. I don't want to think too far ahead, but he even makes, you know, because I heart or Mitch, one of them's going to have to go either way, and I think pressure's on a good salary. So even long term, like he's somebody who could keep on the books for cheap. That way, one of those two guys we're going to have to part with, ways with anyway. But that's the main thing. Like stretch it from eight to nine man rotation, give Julius and those guys a breather, and let Precious play in the playoffs. Yeah, good po good points, man. Good good points, Omar. The, I mean, the the way he's playing, man. Fifteen points, fourteen rebounds. He had five blocks tonight, and a lot of nights. With no OG and no Julius, it's Precious Achua that's taking on some of those tough assignments. I mean, Josh Hart does his as well. He, he's got to he's got to take on tough assignments, and oftentimes is, is guarding undersized or Precious. He, sometimes it might be Siakam one night. You know, he's got to guard <laughs> Jalen Brown. He's got tonight. He's 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 got to guard Paolo. Uh, but mm -hmm. I thought he did a great job. You know, like I said, the great players are going to find a way to take make tough shots over you, and that's what he made Paolo Boncaro do. But at, at no time did he get burned out there. It's just, a lot of times it's just better offense by Apollo. But overall, man, just being a, a – just his activity, his energy and activity on both ends of the floor is infectious. And the thing is, is that, you know, Tom Thibodeau came out with his, uh, his injury report two days ago. He said Mitchell Robinson looks good. Julius Randle is still participating in light contact, not five-on-five, five, not real game contact yet. And OG's on the way. So – you know, Precious is going to be important because you just don't know when Mitch and Julius in particular are coming back, what type of shape they're going to be in. I mean, they look like they're, they're in tip-top shape according to Tibbs, but they're still going to have to ramp up. You're going to, you're going to need him, man. Even if and it's in, in spots, you're going to need him. And he's been 
playing a lot of minutes. He, he played 39 minutes tonight. We're talking about Precious Achua. Yeah. And you, in 39 minutes, and you're competing against Paolo, who played 36. Paolo shot 9 of 20 from the field, 2 of 3 from downtown. Uh, went for 3 of five, 3 of 5 from the free throw line. So Precious wasn't even fouling him that much. And then you have Paolo getting 23 points and being the team leader in scoring at 23 points. Um I thought he did a solid job, man. Yeah. To Paolo tonight. Like, Paolo is just obviously the better offensive talent. You already noted that Paolo's going to figure out how to get his, but to force him to go 9 to 20 from the field to make him go just slightly under 50%, I mean, that's still impressive for Precious, who, you know, has been a journeyman throughout this league, man, from going from Miami to Toronto yeah. and now being in New York. And he's really making a name for himself here. And he's locked in here. Yeah, he, he he should he should get playoff minutes the way that he's playing, especially with his defensive uh, presence. Yeah, like I said, man, if Julius is not healthy, you're going to want him out there just to give Randall that rest. And even if you give Randall that rest, you can at least say that you have a competent power forward out there who one is going to play solid defense, two offensively isn't just going to be a wash like. Six to sixteen, not the greatest, but he still got you fifteen points tonight, right? Yeah. And he's starting to hit the three ball a little bit better now. Like you can rely on him in some spot minutes here and there. And the, uh, and the thing that I also said is that he knows how to put the ball on the deck. He knows how to attack the lanes. He knows how to kick it out. That's all good stuff just to relieve Julius from coming back from a shoulder injury, so that way Julius can stay healthy and can stay fresh yeah. for a playoff run. Man, that's those are all important things. <clears throat> no question. And for me, it's it's not even just precious because just not knowing what you're going to get out of Julius, I wouldn't be surprised if they if they hold him out until the playoffs, bro. Really? I wouldn't be surprised. I feel like that's way too long, man. I feel like that's a gamble not to get him any repetition. I don't see Julius st- sitting out that long, man. I feel you like you're so? going to at least give him like 10 games. You got to give him at least 10 games. Before the playoffs, I, if if Randall returns, it has to be after the West Coast trip. I hear you. I hear you. You, re- you really think they're going to let Julius sit all the way to the playoffs? That just see, that seems too much of a gamble. I hear you, man. But I just wouldn't be surprised, bro. I just would not be surprised, man. Like it just see, it just seems like a tricky injury. I want to shoulder. Wanna, yeah. I want to play this sound bite and shout, shout out to NBA New York. I want to play a little bit of the sound bite. From uh from Mello, shout out to our guy um the kid Mero and Carmelo Anthony, shout out to them from 7 p.m. to Brooklyn. This was this was some of Mero's, I mean Mello's comments on the Randall shoulder injury, just from a player's perspective, mm-hmm. and this is kind of why I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if they held him to uh to until uh until the playoffs actually started. Here's what Mello had to say. You know what I mean, so it's like that's different, and you you have to you have to bang right. You know what I mean? Because you, that, you, that, that's your you, game. That's like your you, game, bully yeah. ball. You know what I mean? So you got to put that shoulder down and and put it in a motherfucker's chest. So Famous I ask Famous you this: Famous. it's not the, it's not, it's not the shooting arm. It's not the shooting shoulder. But is it still, you know what I mean? As bad or worse as if it was the shooting shoulder because of the way he plays? Yeah, because now you, if it's not you banging with your opposite shoulder, you get what I'm saying. Right, so now you. St- <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like, Yo. You get what I'm saying? So you going It's hard to like to show it, but if I'm facing up and it's my I'm my left shoulder, like I gotta bang you with my right shoulder. Boom. Of course. To get, you know, or I can go right. right. But I still gotta come back, you know? We have steps. Get, right. So I I gotta get people off. I gotta use both shoulders, both arms. You know what I mean? So you ain't pushing off with the same arm you're shooting with. Nah. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a lot of different little movements that you got to be careful and just make sure that it's right. But I'm, they going to get them right. And then it's going to come down to the the pain tolerance that you can take because it's, it's, you're going to be in some type of pain. That's it's going to be too, un- like, it's gonna be uncomfortable. That's the thing. Like, it's the, your shoulder. Like The difference between... Like, All right, so so that was um that was Mello and Mero seven p.m. the Brooklyn podcast. You know that's just Mero, just Mello's opinion. But I just it, it, he just made it feel he just made it seem like almost at any point you could re re injure yourself. You know what I mean? 
And that's just that's just what I got from it, from a player's perspective, and, and and the adjustment that you have to make in terms of protecting that 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 shoulder. You know, are you going to be driving to your right? Are you going to be pump faking and getting guys up in the air, attacking the basket? Like, so it's like it, it, he he just made it seem like it's a very tenuous situation where at any time it could go again. And if that's the case, are you really going to risk re-injury? in the regular season and not even get him to the postseason. That's just that's just why I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised if it comes down to the final day with him. I hear you. Wait, and, and look, Mel has history with, you know, a shoulder injury. He tore his labrum in his left shoulder when back like, what, 2013 when he was on the Knicks. So he, he understands of having to make that adjustment and play through injury. But I, I just it's just hard for me to think, CP, that, your second option on the Knicks, who is so important just offensively from what they do, you're not going to see him until the playoffs. So everybody now has to get readjusted to Randall joining. And not saying it's depending, yeah. like the starting rotation should be fine, right? Like they, they understand how he plays, but still, like there's still a rhythm and chemistry. You just have Absolutely. to, like, you got to work out. All right. Not, not, not necessarily a big overhaul, but you still got to work through that. It's just hard for me to believe that you want to do that game one of the playoffs and just put everything on the line and say, you know what? I get the idea of wanting to protect Randall up until that point because you want him to be as fresh, healthy as possible for the most important part of the season. But then you're also putting, to me, a, a big risk on your postseason and saying now you have to integrate a guy who hasn't had enough time, man, to just get back into some rhythm. And yeah. that's where I just see, like, even if you told me, hey, Alex, this could be five games, I could say, you know what, at least five games going into the playoffs makes a little bit more sense than just day one, we go straight into the playoffs. That just seems that just seems too much of an ask, just from not only Randall, but the entire team. Yeah, it's a fair point. To, to, totally fair point. And I think it, it's going to be even more important while he ramps up and and they get him back. I think Precious and Hart are going to be two key pieces here. They're going to be very important. Hart because, you know, he's still he's going to have to do everything. The defense, the rebounding, scoring in the half court, and then Precious, same way. Defense, scoring. He's going to have to knock down those open shots if he's going to be out there in the half court in the playoffs. He's going to have to take those threes and knock those down as well. I think those two guys plus DiVincenzo, those two guys are going to have to make up a, a lot on both ends of the floor to make this thing going. You know, you can argue that, like those those three guys are going to be almost like the most important, you know, non-Brunson guys to kind of help if Julius can't, you know, to, to help kind of supplement what Julius gives you out there. Yeah. And look, that's why it's important. These guys are getting the reps. They are right now. Right. I mean, it's, if they just played, if everyone's healthy, then you're going to ask guys to just get acclimated during the playoffs. But look, they're getting that experience right now, which is going to be great. And especially with Randall being injured, you need guys who are capable of doing that. And we're seeing right now, Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, you know, they may not be able to do it as consistently um, on a night-to-night -night basis as you want from Brunson, right? But still, they show you that you can, depending on the matchup, you know, depending on the night, they can give you just enough where you can rely on them. And this is where Tom Thibodeau just would have to rely heavily on that defense, right? And yep. that you know you can get that from OG. You know you can get that from Precious, Mitch, Hartenstein, like Jericho. You can give, you gotta give Jericho some props today too, man, because he yeah. was out there. Uh, put in that work so true you know the, defensively this team should be set um offensively though we see we see that that that's the big question yep. last year we saw it not enough offense in the second round and so you can at least say Dante and Hart are getting that experience right now but this is where you just need Randall and it goes back to needing Julius Randall because offensively only two guys on this team can create in isolation it's Brunson and it's Randall that's right. why it just it just it just you can't have him coming back in the playoffs. That's just insane to me. Because all right, game one, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it just doesn't work. I mean, he's gonna need a ramp. Isn't that up. What we did for, we did that for the Cavs series, and thankfully the Cavs are soft, right? Yeah, thankfully the Cavs are soft. Like if you're telling me we're going against the Cavs, and I guess that's where the the other the the other element of this too is. 
Like, who are you Who are you projected to go against in the first round? If you're telling me it would be Miami, CP, I do not want Julius to come back for the first time to play Miami and now have to figure out they're going against Eric Spolster, Jimmy Butler, and Bam Adebayo and having to get his offense back. If you're yeah. telling me it's the Cleveland Cavaliers, I could stomach that a little bit more. I don't think Evan Mobley is ready to handle Julius Randle. But, yeah, yeah. you know, ideally you get him back before the playoffs so that way he can work on his game. Well, speaking of coming back, Speaking of coming back, according to Tom Thibodeau, OG could be on his way back very, very soon, man. OG Ananobi is res- has resumed five on five contact, and basically, according to Tibbs, Al, it's just a matter of how he responds after practice, and if he's good, he- he's good to go. So, could be any any day now for OG Ananobi, man. What, what do you think? We need him, and look, need he him. was showing some offensive game too before he went. He went down, so I'd like to see yeah. if he can come back and add that to this team that needs some offense, man. But you also need his defense too, um, and his knockdown shooting. Yeah, the knockdown shooting has also been, you know, outside of Dante, you need more guys who can knock down the three. Obviously, you have McBride who's been doing an admirable job as well. But looking forward to having OG back, man. Just so that way, it, it's it's the Brunson Randall OG show. Yep, you need OG to be healthy. That as much as I, I would say. You need OG back just so we see what he can do. He he needs to come back just to help this team get to the playoffs and keep maintain seating. He would be the guy I'm like, all right, because of his injury history, I'm like, what you're asking him to do is lesser on the totem pole than what Randall needs to do. And I would I, I'd be more okay with him if roles were reversed, him coming back later in the season. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I definitely agree with that. The, because he's a guy that you can plug and play. He's going to do his job out the gates. You, you know what I'm saying? If, if he's in great shape, his defense will lead the way. And if he's able to knock down the shots, if he's able to get into a rhythm, he should be fine. But like you said with Randall, it, there's a lot more moving parts to it in terms of ensuring you know how effective he can be with the shoulder and how he makes his, his team better, both as, as, a, uh, as a scorer and as a playmaker. So great points there. You know, when, when I when I look at the the looming return of OG and look at the schedule of when he could potentially be coming back, you know, you have the two Philly games. Is it Tuesday? Could it be Tuesday, that second Philly game? Maybe it's not. Mm-hmm. Could it be Sunday? Could it be Sunday? Could it be Tuesday? You know, obviously you have the Maxi matchup there. You got Tobias Harris. Portland, they should be able to do fine just without him, do just fine without him. Sacramento now, you have the Fox factor. Maybe you get some Sabonis. Do they bring him off the bench? Right? Let Hart start. Ramp up OG a little bit. Golden State, you know, the Steph, you know, he's, he's pretty, he wouldn't get much time on Steph, but you got Kaminga playing at a high level. Yeah, he'd probably defend right? Kaminga. Take Kaminga yeah. out of the game. You have Denver. He's taking on Porter Jr. as a Porter Jr. matchup. So, he makes these games a lot more digestible. You know, they 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 they, they will still be underdogs in in these in three of these games, but you know when you think about those tough assignments, he's a guy that you know you're looking to take that on. And then on top of that, I'm sure there's nobody happier to have OG Ananobi back than Josh Hart, <laughs> because then Josh Hart can now get a little bit of a, a breather, a little bit, a little bit. Like I said, it's no, yeah. it's no telling if they start OG right away or they bring him off the bench, but Josh Hart, I'm sure, will be happy to have OG Ananobi back. I'm sure he would be – he's praying for OG to come back. Like, man, look, these 40-plus point uh, outings are, are getting old to be old much. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, uh, funny enough, as, uh, as, as, I'm, as I got the YouTube, uh, as we're doing this right now so I can see the chat, Steph Curry uh, uh, for a Sirius XM uh, – Ad just pops up, so there you go for Steph, who will be the Knicks will be facing next week. But there you go. Yeah, for OG, like that's a guy that you want to make sure that he's healthy. That like yes. like you just said, CP, you, you put it in simple, simple terms. Plug and play guy, right? What you're asking him to do is not much. Shoot the three, play some good defense, be that guy for the second unit to give some offense. Um I want him just to be ready, CP, for the playoffs because he is that. He is what will tilt the scales, especially when you think about putting him on the best offensive player on the opposing team, yep. right? And if you have those big dreams of facing Boston at somewhere in the playoffs, he's the guy that you need healthy because he's the guy that's going to be on Jason Tatum. 
There you go. He's the guy who's going to be the turn for Jason Tatum. And, you know, he's been very successful when it comes to slowing down Tatum. And it, that's the big picture. That's why roles reverse, man. I, I, You could say OG could, you could wait for OG to come back to, at the end of the season and bring back Randall sooner if, if that was the case. But for OG, man, I agree with you. I think it's going to be, you just wean him back in, man. Have him come off the bench. You don't give him too many minutes. It's like what you're seeing for Hartenstein and Jalen Brunson tonight. You manage the minutes, man. There you, go. you don't need him to get injured. True indeed. True indeed. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Another fire edition of the Knicks Post Game Live presented by Underdog Fantasy. CP the Franchise, Alex Rotaros on the ones and twos. Welcome to all of our viewers, all of our subscribers, all of our franchise channel members. If you guys are new here to the show, if you guys are new in the chat, type in hashtag new and we will shout you guys out. And while we wait for that, Al, let's get to the key stats of the night, man. Key stats of the night brought to you by our good friends at Underdog Fantasy. 98-74, to 74, the Knicks wash the Magic in a must-win game. And this was uh, a two-front effort here by the Knicks, man. 48% from the field, they shoot 48.5% from three. 16 of 33 from downtown. What a stark difference from the 30% shooting performance that they had against the Hawks on Tuesday. Uh, 75% from the charity stripe. Only, only eight attempts for the Knicks tonight. So, you know, a lot of you guys said, you know, no attempts. Attempts of Brunson and and not still you no know, Nick's still not really getting that downhill threat, but hey, they, they got it done from outside, so we'll we'll take that. Forty three to thirty seven, they win the rebounding battle by six. Uh, assist battle twenty to twelve, Knicks win that one by eight. Only sixteen turnovers, sixteen turnovers, but only leading to eight magic points. So the Knicks did fairly well there. Thirty six points in the paint for the Knicks, holding the Magic as you said out to twenty six points in the paint. Half of their season average, which was excellent. And then wire to wire, largest lead, 26 points for the Knicks. Wire to wire victory, man. My favorite stat, CP, zero lead changes. Zero lead changes. Because the Knicks were in control this yep. entire time. Zero times that this game was tied. Yep. As soon as it was the beginning of this game, Knicks were just in control. Uh, look, there's You can just look at those stats. The Knicks just... Beat the living daylights out of the Orlando Magic tonight. No, there's every statistical category you look at. Knicks were just a positive yeah. over the Magic for the most part. Uh, outside of blocks where they tied and steals uh, and turnovers, Knicks were just killing it everywhere else. So it was a good game by the Knicks, man. Really appreciate it. And I did get the underdog fantasy uh, to, to pop up. So yes, I do I did. have the results. I did. I did. Uh, what, what are the results of our draft tonight, sir? Um, not good for you or me. But oh, very good, but very good for one, Mr. JD Sports. Oh, ah, my goodness, man! What? Do, what? So do it looks like you man? will be flying out to Cleveland for a week, CP. To well, go I, on came, that food I came tour. in third. You came in third. Oh my goodness! Hang on. All right, who? Do, who? Do, okay, who do I have tonight? It's over already. It's over already. Wow. Team JD Sports Talk wins two ninety three. You finished with two fifty eight. I finished with 239. The projections were right, man. But you know what happened again, right? I felt like you what? guys sabotaged me again. This is the second time in a row that you guys have done this. What, what's going on This here? is the what, second what, time. What, what no, 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 no. This is the second time in a row that you guys have done this to me. What is, what is the gripe that you have, CP? This is what happens. This is what happens. Don't be upset that you're going out nah, to food for a nah. week now. Don't I be upset feel like this is a coordinated effort tour. between you and JD. This is what will happen with the draft. Same thing happened on Tuesday. He'll, oh he'll hit me up. He'll hit me up. What's up with the draft? What time are we doing the draft? And then I'll hit you up. Are you ready to draft? And you'll be like, all right, cool. Then I'll send you the link and I'll send him the link. And you guys will take 20 minutes from that point that you commit to jump in to the draft. Meanwhile, my mind is already on the next 10 things, so I completely forget that we're doing the draft, and then I get forced into an auto draft. So just like Tuesday <laughs> night, just like Tuesday night, I look into the draft, and I'm already in the middle of the round. I have no clue what's going on. I just see the thing going like this. Your turn, your turn. Man. Yeah. Second night That's in a row, I had to auto draft. And JD, I see you in the chat. Stop, man! Don't don't, Where, don't eliminate my win. Don't eliminate Where, my win because I won the first one between all three. Okay, yeah. I won one too. Do, yeah. do not do this to me. Okay? Second time I got forced into an auto draft, man. I feel I I sense a foot trick going on. Will Aquino's feeling me in it. 
Well, here's your issue, CP. Here's your issue. Yeah. I, too, have responsibilities when you hit me up. I'm doing dishes. I'm doing feeding the cats around here, taking care of things, washing bottles. You know, I do have a child myself that I got to take care of. Come All on, right. man. You know what? I'm, you set it up next time. You set me? it up. Yep, you set it up. Send the link to JD and then to me because the, the way that underdog works is – like, if you set up a three-person draft, the draft automatically kicks off when the last person enters the room, right? When the last person, when the third person enters the room, it automatically sets off the draft. So you can't set it for a time. Right. That's the only thing I, I would like for them to, to do. Like, I would like to, for them to have, like, set times that, that you can make your draft. That way everybody can do what they need to do. You got to do the dishes, take care of little man, boom, boom, boom. You know when the draft is about to start. Sunday night, you got you're starting the draft. Okay, I see. I see. I see what happens over here. Yeah. Now you're making excuses like Alec Burks all over again, man. Bro, okay, listen, you, you, listen, man. What, what's going on here? Let me see the team that they pick for me first. <laughs> well, they did give me Ant Man first, but after the hey. night that he had last night, that was going to be hard to repeat that performance on a back to back, and they they had to travel from Indiana to Cleveland. He only had 19 points, five rebounds, and three assists. One steal. Yo, Jared one Allen did the damn thing for you tonight. I did, yeah. I had to. I didn't even want to pick him, and I picked him. But he beasted though. Thirty-three points, eighteen rebounds, three assists, two two steals, and two blocks for Jared Allen. Hey, and you get you get one point five points for every rebound, right? And then you one, know you should do CP. What? You should have the Knicks chick just do your draft for you. You should just hand <laughs> phone sh- over to I her. Should. I should. Man. Thirty-eight points, eighteen rebounds for Jared Allen. That was a good, that was a good one for him. But everybody else was in the 30s. Brunson, like, the, the, that's the thing with the fantasy points. You really need a sit, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks is really where the game is at. Yeah. You need guys points. across the strategy. Points ain't really it. Because nope. you only get one point for every point. Bro, I chose Chet Holmgren tonight. Chet only got me a, a whopping 15 points. Mm. Yeah. You know? Tonight was SGA, but SGA is just insane, you know? You you need uh you you need stat sheet guys, man, because even when Brunson scores twenty six points, three rebounds, two assists, it's only thirty fantasy points. Mm. Let's uh, see who JD's team was. Yeah, let's see who JD's team. JD drafted Oof. DeJounte Murray. Forty one points, seven rebounds, six dimes, two steals. That's a fantasy night. That's a fantasy night for sure. 62 fantasy points. Uh, and his next big, biggest player, Kyle Kuzma. I skipped over Kuzma in this. You did too. <laughs> we, we definitely skipped. Kuzma was on the board for a little while. and I, I took I stayed Bridges away. instead. I stayed away from it, man. I think I took Josh Hart instead. And uh, and, uh, and that was on a, on a back-to-back Wait picks. a minute. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on yeah. one second. You said you auto-drafted tonight. No, no, no. First half was an auto-draft. Oh, By okay, the time okay. I, I caught say- on... I had to oh, make okay. up, for, you know, for the for the mishaps. Okay. So then, I'm just trying yeah. to get the story correct. No, but case in point, case in point, mm-hmm. I drafted Jared Allen, and look what that look what happened. Seventy fantasy well, it, points. It, it, yeah, yeah, I would have been in trouble you. if I would have started from the beginning. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, so so you should be happy then with how, how everything uh, played out for you then. So you shouldn't even be blaming anybody. You should even nah, ask yeah, me I'm, to start I'm blaming the, start I'm blaming the AI. Now. I'm blaming the AI for picking the wrong. You're blaming guys. the AI. That's a great one. I didn't Go have Chad GTP do this for you. I I didn't want Ant Man tonight. I didn't believe in him. Uh, who else did he had? Yeah, Kuzma had a good night. He uh, 28 points, 8 rebounds, 9 dimes, and a, a steal and 2 blocks. Zion had a good one tonight. 23-12, 4 assists, 2 steals, 3 blocks for Zion tonight. Mm. So, so those were like his heavy hitters. And then we look at your team. Uh, Shea. Shea and Miles Bridges and Paolo went off for you. 35, 37, five rebounds, six assists, one steal, two blocks for Shea against Miami, no less. Miles mm-hmm. Bridges, 32, 12, four dimes and a block. Uh, Paolo against the Knicks, 23, nine rebounds, two assists, two steals, four blocks. He went, he went crazy in the second quarter. He was throwing everybody's, uh, everybody's shot. And then Tobias, that was, that was a good pickup. 21 points, 10 rebounds, three assists, three steals and a block. He's a stat sheet guy. It's a good job. It's a good, good job. Hey, man. 
I highly recommend everyone to download the app Underdog Fantasy. Go to yeah. the website, man, and, and and use the promo code KFTV to get to a one hundred dollar match. Because look, we're having fun. We're just bantering over here, yeah. and we got JD in the chat just talking about oh, all, all of a match. sudden. Look who appears in the chat. He, wait, I think he was waiting for this segment. Now he's about to go out. Now he's about to be outside. But he was waiting. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you know JD's about to be outside he, too. He was <laughs> waiting to step outside. Yeah, the shoes laced up, the, the button up. He's ready to go. And he was waiting for the underdog fantasy segment. He's probably pulling out some clone right now. Like, all right, he's, he's about to step like, outside right now and, and get his weekend you know, the started. Man, uh, you the know, bird man, you know, hand like, okay, at a, at our expense. You know what I mean? We just funded his drink money tonight. Yeah, he can now go get one Bud Light. One Bud Light. You know what I mean? What well, one glass of uh, uh, Paul Masson reserve? Mm. Reserve class. Oh, look at this guy. Talk about reserves over here. Hmm. Yeah. Now we know what CP's drinking. N- nothing, man. I'm dry. I don't even got anything. I don't even got wine tonight. So I'm I'm chilling tonight. Damn. Yeah, I'm chilling tonight. Yeah, I got caught slipping. I don't what I don't know what what got into me, man. We had a good on session a today on a win. On a win, man. I was out in NYC today. Me me and Combo did the uh the podcast in studio. So that Shout was fun. Combo. And then I got home. I was just getting back to work. I completely forgot to uh to re up, man. So yeah. It's a water kind of night for me. Water kind of night. <laughs> so I, no, I do I do got the white rum up there above uh. the fridge. Uh. But it's like it might be a night like tonight. Like the white rum is really for like desperate times. You know what I mean? I'm not really, you know, it, it's you got to be careful with it because it will lay you down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it it will lay you down. So if he's trying to make moves tomorrow, he's like, wait a minute. Yeah, you you go you you go to that button, that option when it's like, you know, you you really need to knock the edge off. This is why I keep tequila on deck, CP, like me. You're right. You, you, you're definitely right. And the liquor store by me, they close early, man. You got to be open to, uh, until at least 10. Come on, man. Well, what time do they open till? I think it's like 8.30 even. Like, what? Uh, like 9 o'clock used to be standard. That's crazy. Yeah, they no, no, they close at 9. They close at 9. Okay. I just didn't get there. Okay. I was watching the game. I, I didn't feel like leaving. You know what I'm saying? I feel you. What's even crazy, but if you want to talk about uh, liquor stores closing early, there's one right at the end of my street. Yeah. They close at 7, CP. They might as well not even be in business. Bro, that, me and the missus talk about that all the time. I'm like, what? what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> they might as well People not even be People getting out of work business. still. I'm like, we're, we're, you know, they're commuting home. We want to make a stop and go grab something. Why are you closing at 7? What are we doing, man? Yeah, my God. They, uh, I don't like that, man. Cody Glock, Cody Glock, talk to us, man. How you feeling? It's Cody Glock on the Discord. Cody Glock, I'll mute your mic. Cody, Cody, going once. All right, Cody, you got it. You got to drop out. I, I see you trying to uh, unmute your mic and, and uh, mute it again. Drop out and and uh, jump back in. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Oh, GQ said the white rum and the ginger hails might be a good mix. I'm thinking about it. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna mix the kiwi strawberry ginger hails with the with the white rum tonight. Yeah. And we never saw CP again. <laughs> 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 that might move the alarm from eight AM to about uh ten thirty. You know what I mean? We're getting older, man. It, it takes a little while to, to recover. CP, we have a game of the week preview that needs to be get done. That needs to oh, get done. Oh, what time tomorrow. is that? What time is that? No, is two that o'clock. PM? No, no, Gamba. I think Gamba's going to do that one. He's going to produce I'm just that. Messing with you. I'm just and messing we with we that. got NBA report at one o'clock. Make sure you guys tap in NBA report, man. One o'clock. CP, Alex, and Andrew. GQ, good idea though, man. I, I think that might be the move. I think that might be the move. A little white rum and, uh, you know, switch up from the scotch tonight. I, I got nothing left, man. Got to go to the bullpen. You know, <laughs> go to the bullpen. gotta go to the bullpen. You know, usually, usually and he's thrown <laughs> no strikes. Yeah, that white rum. It's a cleaning agent. You know, use it on use it on mosquito bites. It's, <laughs> it's multi purpose. <laughs> multi purpose, yeah. man. Start yeah, that's why a, it's right next to the vinegar. Start up a barbecue. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's the reason why it's right next to the vinegar. That's CP. it. 
that, that's it. Brooklyn Vegas said, "White right, rum, she's yeah." He know, he knows, he knows, man. It's one, one of those nights, man. That it's a rhyme animal, Chuck D, man. He's in the chat with us. Throw a hashtag PE in the chat. Throw a hashtag PE in the chat. Absolutely, Cody, Cody Glock. You, yes, you, sir. You. It's Friday night. Let's get Can it. Can hear me? Loud and clear, man. I right, bet, bet. Yo, shout out Manscaped, ma. Shout out, man. I have a turnovers because of Manscaped, ma. Yeah. Take care of my ball profusely with the utmost friction in my mixing. Yo, man. Is it a stretch to say this is the best defensive game we have seen since our injury bug? Sure. Is that a stretch, man? No, it's not a stretch at all. Not a stretch at all. That's a fact, sir. You would be speaking facts. Wait. We, we we came to play with confidence tonight, thanks to our captain coming back. JB was lit tonight. I got to be, you know, quiet because the little one, you know, she got to sleep. Okay. We need that home court advantage, so we to establish our presence in the rankings, man. Another night, no shake melting. I'm waiting patiently. What do you Best mean, man? He I played tonight, today. man. You didn't catch what the end you of the said, game? CP? You didn't catch garbage time? Shake got in the game, man. You missed it. Dropped a triple double. Nah, I, I caught that. I caught that, but he ain't got no. He ain't got no like. He ain't even touched the ball, man. Oh, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but best news I heard today was that OG news, man. OG yeah. double OG triple OG is coming back. Yeah. Took the handball he had stuck in his elbow out. Now he five on five contact hooping out. I hope he comes back during the road stretch. He's the most important piece we have to our defense for sure. And until Julius comes back, OG can go on a rampage. But wait, let me tell you something about Vichy, man. Because that's no snitch. That's no He's on the way <laughs> back. You see my guy out there with the suit on? Yeah. You see Mitch? My, you see him? I mean, we see Mitchie in the garden, no headband. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't don't sweat him, B. Yeah. Move back when you see him in the garden, no no headband. Tips, tips, he he feeling good. He yeah. he tips said he feeling good, so I stamped it. We getting prime Mitch Law, no snitch Law back, and okay. the indictment is coming Eastern Conference. The Rico is dropping Eastern Conference, and a lot of these so called top players and teams are going to jail now. Nah. You're going to jail now. Okay. Pull up yeah, that well, well, communist wait, wait right second, now. Wait a second. Let me ask you something, man. Uh, your man Sheldon came through the other night, man. Have you seen him? Oh, now, nah, yo, I'm happy I ain't have to um, pull out Sheldon tonight. Uh, Sheldon. Because oh, okay. I, I, I couldn't stand that defense, man. That defense was horrible. That's why Sheldon, man, I, Sheldon, he had to make an approach, bro. Like right now, like I'm on fire, Mitchy communist. You gotta put that up. I'm on shut down. Cause he he, I'm so glad I ain't had to pull out him tonight. Yo, Nikki, yo, shout out Nikki Pipes, man. Shout out CP Futos, man. Shout out Alex, man. Shout out Chuck D, man. Hashtag P in the chat, man. Shout out Mr. Corner Elbow Benji. I see you, top dog. Scream at me. Shout That's out Chris cool. Copeland. RP the creator of Dragon Ball Z. This one's personal. Mm. I'm out, man. Mm. Facts. Cody Glizak. I heard about I woke up and heard the news, man. My condolences to the Dragon Ball Z community, man. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, rest in peace to Akira Toriyama, man. The creator of Dragon Ball Z passed away today at the age of 68, man. Mm. The impact that he made on the anime community, man, especially with Dragon Ball Z, that just changed the landscape. Yeah. I mean, starting off with Dragon Ball, it, it's sad to hear, man. 68, man. That's young. 68. That's young. 68, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Wow. For all you Dragon Ball Z heads out there or Dragon Ball fans, like, that's just great, <clears throat> great, that's just great entertainment, you know? Yeah, yeah. Everything about it, man, it's such a rewatchable, such a rewatchable series, all of them. Yeah. And just how long it's gone on, man, it's just, it stinks, man. Mm. Truly a pioneer to open up the anime content that has allowed, you know, to talk, to, even you using a reference of, like, Shadow Realm to bring up Yu-Gi-Oh! and all Pokemon and all these other things that yeah. have really, you know, infiltrated the culture. Shout out to Akira, man. Shout out to him. Shout Rest out to peace. him, man. That that's 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 a uh, a cultural icon right there. Mm hmm You know? It's a cultural icon. Shout out shout out to shout out to him, man. Great got job well done while he was here though. You know? Yeah. Job, job well done. For all you for all you in the chat, who remembers Toonami? Who remembers Toonami on Cartoon Network and just waiting for Dragon Ball Z? Mm. 
to come on the air. Who, how many of you are out there right now? All my Dragon Ball Z heads, man. Throw a DBZ in the chat, man. Throw a DBZ in the chat to the Dragon Ball Z heads, man. Yeah. Sad day, man. Sad indeed. Day. It, indeed, man. Okay, who else we want to go to here? Uh, Kareem the Dream. Kareem the Dream. Go ahead and uh, get to it. I'll, I'll mute your mic. Kareem the Dream on the Discord. I'm here. What's good? But what's good, man? How you feel, man? I'm good, man. Yo, I mean, New York, if OG comes back, Randall, I honestly think I'm a conspiracy theorist, bro. I okay. think that Leon and all of them were like, yo, let, let these people rest. Let them marinate for a second mm. so that when we get to the playoffs, we can ball because Tibbs is going to play these guys 47 minutes a game. Let's go. And I think, I mean, Leon wants to keep his job, you know. Yeah. Leon doesn't want a first-round exit. Yeah. So, I'm ready. I mean, I mean, Brunson could have played last game, and they kept him on ice. And look how fresh he was. Mm. So, I'm excited. I'm feeling good. Lifelong Knicks fan. I mean, Let's it's, go. Where, where are you calling day. in from, man? You sound kind of young. How long have you been rocking with the Knicks? Man, 32. Oh, I'm right. in San Jose, yeah, California right now. Which part? I'm Which born part of Cali? New York. Which part of San Cali? Jose, California. San Jose. I've never been up there. Bay Area. Yeah, yeah it's my, where my wife is. But okay. we live in Portland, Oregon. So, we're going to see the Knicks. Uh, Trailblazers game All right, this week. Right. Nice, nice. Uh, so, man, shit, man. Sorry. Hey, fam- Sorry, family show, sir. Family show, man. Yeah. Family show, my bad. All yeah, right. yeah. But how, you guys are feeling good, huh? Great. Fantastic, man. It's Friday night. Yeah. You know what I mean? About to get to it. Yeah, get, get you some sleep. You know, okay. Rest up for the next game. Maybe we could beat Philly twice in a row. Let's do it. Be Christmas. All right, brother. Let's Peace. do it, man. Peace. All right. Oh, here we go, CP. Shout yeah. out to Chuck D. He said, I learn something every day on here. I'm going to check it out. I have no idea what Dragon Ball is. It's a start for me. Okay. If Chuck D is going to do this, CP, you know that means you. You're next. It's, it's a lot of catching up, man. You know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to tap into the current content. I got to watch Shogun. Oh. Right? Shogun. We mentioned Shogun. And now the recommendations are pouring in. So it's a good mm. sign. You know what I mean? That might yeah. be, I might go do that right now. Wow. Yeah, I gotta watch Shogun, man. What's the equivalent? This guy from Dragon Ball Z, the creator. What's his name? Put some respect on his name. What's his name? Akira Toriyama. What's the NBA equivalent of his passing? NBA equivalent. Woo. That's a good one. Is it Jordan? Yeah, I probably I, somewhere along those lines. Probably somewhere along those lines, just because for the impact that he had, like on the entire, like if you think anime Dragon Ball Z was the first thing to like open it up, like if you think about the Jor- Jordan being the first player to have his own branded, like real branded shoe, to have mm-hmm. like the marketing, the whole aspect that goes out there, I think that's close enough. Mm-hmm. Because you think about Dragon Ball Z, just the merchandise alone that goes out there, the DVDs, everything that went with it. Comics, I think that I think that's a good co- a comp. Mm. Okay, interesting, I- interesting, man. All right, uh, do we have Harrison Dolan? Harrison Dolan closing the show. Hey guys, you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. How you feel, bro? I'm feeling good. Um, how are you guys? Yeah, good, man. Definitely good, man. All right, shout out Akira Toriyama. Rest in peace, mm. legend. Wait, you were, were you a Dragon Ball Z head as well? I was, man. I, I would play all the video games growing up. Like mm-hmm. that was my stuff. Mm. The big Yu-Gi-Oh head too. But okay, uh, let's talk about the Knicks. Let's talk about the Knicks. So, no doubt. lost in the shuffle and Cody Locke's call is that this man shouted out Chris Copeland as well. He did. He did. He did. I thought that was. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> but. Uh... I got some uh, some thoughts, and then I'll just end with a question. So I thought it was a great win tonight. Really good team win. I loved what I saw from Precious, Hardenstein, um, McBride, like everybody. But, you know, it wasn't all good. Boyan still got to step up. Yeah. Alec Burks, zero points in five minutes. Yeah. That's the Harrison stat line. <laughs> I would, that's the Harrison, man. It's when you get in the game and don't do anything. <laughs> 
Uh, you said that's how you look at the YMCA, man? Yeah, I mean, he's been flirting with that a little bit, but he finally got it today. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man. But, um, yeah, with all these injuries, um, some of our situational guys have got the chance to step up. Like, Precious had an awesome game. Yeah. McBride, really, his jump shot's coming through. I want to gauge how you guys feel like Sims has been playing. He kind of flies under the radar. Yeah. But I thought he's been doing a pretty serviceable job here. Um, specifically his defense. Yeah. What do you guys think of that? I, I think Sims has been holding it down, man, defensively and rebounding the past couple of games. He's looking good. He, he's definitely holding it down. I, happy to see Sims contributing, man. You know? Yeah, for sure. Front court has been holding it down. It hasn't been an issue. Yeah. The fact that we held him to 74 without 74. OG yeah. is a 74. great sign. 74. They so, rose, man, they, they rose have a good in. night. Shout yeah. out to you guys. Everyone hit that like button if you haven't done it already. Yes, sir. And take care, y'all. Harrison Dolan on the Discord. Salute, man. Have a great weekend, man. All right, so that was our guy, Harrison Dolan, Al. What hey, else? Sims played 28 yep. minutes tonight, man. The simulation. The simulation. The wall of Jericho. Yeah, yeah. The simulation. 28 minutes should give you an indication for how shorthanded this team is that Tibbs trust them to be yeah. playing solid minutes at the five. Um, I think he's been good, man. I think, you know, for him, he's getting better at his positioning. Uh, understand the defensive assignments, you know, yeah. he's taking strides, man. He's yeah. taking strides. I mean, is he going to, I still think it, you, he's not going to pass Hartenstein or, or, or replace Mitch, but, and Precious has now made a name for himself to even be a backup five in a pinch, but Jericho has been playing very well, man. He's been playing very well. The thing that Jericho offers is just strength. You know, he's not yeah. somebody that you can just easily push around. So he will go out there and compete. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Um, here was Precious Al after the game. Shout out to Tyler for capturing this. Here's Precious Achua's a uh, couple of his, his sound bites from the post game in case anybody missed it. Just just a little bit here, but uh, great guy. Here's what Precious had to say, saluting the crowd. Here we go. First and foremost, I just want to, you know, um, thank the man above, thank my family, and I also want to thank New York City for embracing me since I was a little kid. I grew up in New York City, you know, going to middle school, high school out here in the city. So for me, just being able to come back home and represent the city means a lot to me. And I just want to say thank you, New York City. I love you guys. I think that's a nice little touch, man. They've, they've been doing this for, for a couple of years now where they, you know, they pump in the interview sound to the crowd. It's a nice mm -hmm. little, nice little wrinkle. Not a, 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 every, mm -hmm. every team doesn't do that. I think that's a nice touch. You know what I mean? Sure. Especially for like these unsung heroes you know these guys that deserve it. The guys that don't don't always get the the acclaim and the accolades like the stars do. I think that's a nice touch. For sure. I mean, you're giving them, uh, you know, you're allowing their voice to be heard and get a little more insight to their personality and who they are as a person. And I think I think it's good, man. I agree with you. I agree with you. Make sure to check out the 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 audio clip I just sent of you of. Coach Mosley for the Magic uh, on what he said about this type of atmosphere for tonight and it, it being okay. a, a playoff atmosphere. All right, cool, cool. Let me let me pull that up. Good stuff. Good stuff here. Uh, good stuff here. Uh, all right, here we go. Here is Jamal Mosley on tonight's matchup. This is exact. This is exactly what the playoffs will be like. Mm. That's exactly what we would want, and that's exactly what we will embrace. Right. There's no excuses about it. You have to give New York a ton of credit for in the way in which they played, uh, not just their physicality, but their ability to make shots, get guys open. Uh, again, this is something we'll go back, look, look at, learn from and continue to work on getting better in our areas that we need to. This All right. That was the head coach of the Orlando Magic, man. Jamal Mosley says this is what the playoffs are going to be like, man. Knockdown, drag out, fight, physical game. Mm. I don't know if you're going to be shooting 48% from three every night. <laughs> no, you're not. But the yeah. thing is, man, is that the <laughs> the Magic are like what the Knicks were last year for a team that can't shoot threes. Right. 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 And so that, I think, when you talk, when you look at through a Magic's lens, 
Like, you need to be able to shoot from downtown. That's why the Knicks went out and said, you know, we need to get Dante. We need OG. We have to make those trades this year. We we have to make sure we have enough floor spacing yeah. for guys like Brunson and Randall to attack. And I think you see that with Paolo where, you know, he's fighting for every single shot tonight. 9 of 20 gets you 23 points. They but the next, guy who, everything. the next guy, CP, is, is Franz Wagner, who only had 13. That was your next leading score on the Magic. So... For them, yeah, this is what the playoffs looks like. And and even for the Knicks, you could say this is what the playoffs look like because it's going to be a grind, right? It's not going to yeah. be easy. Like, the Knicks made it look easy. They won by more than 20 points, but it was no easy task for them to even get to nine. They didn't crack 100. They, they still got 98. They didn't crack 80. <laughs> they didn't crack 80. Yeah, um, Magic didn't crack 80, but the Knicks didn't crack 100. That's what I'm trying oh, to say. Oh, like, got you, got you, got you, got you. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. That that is true, and you know I think part of what went so well for the Knicks tonight was their paint intimidation and their rim protection. It forced the Magic to have to shoot shots, and that played right into the Knicks' hands because they're not a good shooting team. Mm -hmm. Great for job, sure. great great job, man, great job. So. Uh, yeah, great show, man. Great show, everybody. Great show, every, uh, all the mods, everybody in the chat, all the franchise channel members. Great show, indeed. How about this, man? How about who saw Francis Nagano get his ass whooped tonight by Anthony Joshua? What? Hmm. What? What in the world? What in the world, Francis? This was an embarrassment. Yeah, I went all the way to Saudi Arabia to get your ass whooped like this. Not even three rounds. This is why you check these things out on alternative sources. This is why I watch UFC, man. This boxing stuff, they've turned boxing into a charade. So, so are you not excited for the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight scene on bro, Netflix? No, Tyson was not supposed to do that, man. Come on, Mike, man. Because, listen, if Mike doesn't knock this kid out in 10 seconds, the thing is rigged. I, I'm not even going to watch it, man. I'm going to watch it on bootleg. But I'm not even going to buy it. If they turn boxing into a charade, man, now it's these. It, they've turned it into pure entertainment. It's a spectacle now. The hyped-up fights aren't even worth it. You know, the Haney-Garcia fight, I don't. it, it might be all right. The, the last fight that was hyped up, uh, um, what's my guy's name? Beat, beat, beat the you-know-what out of, out of Errol Spence. Mm -hmm. And now you got Francis out here, you know. Now, Francis got to go fight Jake Paul next. That's where he belongs. <laughs> <laughs> go fight Jake Paul next. Because it's oh, like, man, man. bro. Like, you know, if I, I, Iron Mike, why you do that, man? I didn't even like when Iron Mike and Roy Jones was out there, you know, sending love taps to each other. It's a joke. They've turned it into a spectacle. I will be on that UFC 299 tomorrow night, though. And you know what the worst part is for Mike Tyson because of his legacy? You know, if he loses the Jake Paul, not saying it's going to ruin what he was as a young man because he's older, but still, like, I don't you know like how it is man. today. It's like everyone will turn it like, oh, you know, what's uh, he's not great anymore. He's da, 57, da, da, da. bro. I, I, I know. I, I can't. That that didn't sit right with me, man. I don't like it, man. You know, you want to, like, pick these fights against, like, UFC fighters. Go ahead and, and, and do that. Because Jake Paul, that's what they do. They turn it into a spectacle. They pick the fighter. You know, he trains hard and everything. Don't get me wrong. Him and his brother, they've trained hard. They, they, they've, they've, you know, really made a name for themselves as it pertains to content and media. They, they're on top of the sport. His brother went all the way to wrestling. And he's doing the damn thing over there. But like, yeah, I don't want Iron Mike, man. That's my guy, man. I, I can't see that, man. I can't see. I think UFC tomorrow night will be good, though. You got Sugar Show and O'Malley versus uh, Chito Vera. That's a big stack card tonight, tomorrow night as well. UFC, yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm going to be watching UFC tomorrow night. So we'll see if Sugar Sean can defend his title, he beat my guy Aljamain Sterling, knocked Aljamain clean, cold, out of there. Out of there. That's the thing with Sugar Sean. He looks crazy. He looks like you'd see him out there in, like, Greenwich Village. You know what I mean? Just getting after it, but he's got sneaky power. You know? He's got sneaky power. So, yeah. 
that that was our fighting segment, Al. We're multidimensional. You know, we went from we went from basketball to Dragon Ball Z to boxing. That's what we do on the show. <laughs> I'm trying to tell these people, man. Number one show for the fans, by the fans, for a reason. You know what I'm saying? We even had a whole uh, connoisseur segment on on liqueur. That's it. That that is correct, man. You, you, you ain't never lied, my guy. So, yeah, that that's just what we do. You know that that's just what we do, Al, man. That that that's just what we do. So, uh, so to everybody in the chat once again, man, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Big win, much needed win, and these New York Knicks. The orange and blue boys live on to fight the good fight. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on one second, Al. Hang on, hang on. Oh, my Hang on. Of course, you had to wait until this moment of the show. On Saturday. Technically, it is Saturday. Yes, you are correct. (laughs) But we got to honor the call, man. We got to honor the call. So, we will salute a super chat from Sergeant Sources himself. A $10 super chat from Robert Randolph. Bogey spacing was the to Friday's night Knicks son tonight. Shake Milton going to play on March 14th. So there it is. Sergeant Sources, ladies and gentlemen. Sergeant Sources. I have no idea what that just said. But hey, if it makes sense to him, it makes sense to us, man. It's Friday night somewhere. Cue the music. Cue the music, man. Al, do you have anything to say on that? I have no idea what was just written, but uh, <laughs> sure. Whatever whatever you said, Robert. Whatever you said. Hey, we'll take his word for it, man. 98 to 74. We got the victory, man. Do it just to get there. CP the franchise, Al Taros. Sergeant Sources, our resident insider. We out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that this show is available in audio podcast format. Catch us on all major podcast platforms. Salute to our sponsors, man. Underdogfantasy.com. Use our code KFTV for instant deposit match up to $100. Ginger Hales. Use our code KFTV at gingerhales.com for 15% off your first order. We'll see you Sunday night. And we might have a special guest. We'll see you Sunday night. Peace.